Will Sasso, using all of the data I have absorbed from text messages oh, and yes. emails between you and the astonishing friends you grew up with, yes. I was able to recreate your childhood diary. You must now read the passages I have selected in the voice of Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> this is Stone Cold Steve Austin reads Will Sasso's childhood diary. Begin. Dude, As always. I'm not gonna, what? I mean, this is my favorite thing that Dudesy does. This is maybe my favorite thing of anything that I watch, any media that I intake, anything that happens in my life, maybe this is the highlight of it. When you Jeez. read these fucking things, <laughs> that's Stone Cold. <laughs> I would like to say that recreate is the operative term here because none of this is actually my. Um, well, none of this is actually my. We're looking at a meme behind me that just says. Well, um, let me get some water. I gotta, you know, I gotta. Yeah, dude. Wet the instrument. You gotta give the instrument lubricated it's like uh it's like jazz yeah man it's like reed oil is that what they put on um saxophones zoosophones sure. clarinets yep all right uh, 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 uh. <laughs> okay oh for fuck's sake all right here we go <laughs> october 16th 1991 dear diary i haven't taken a shit in 48 hours <laughs> They may, that may not seem like a big deal to a normal person, but for me, it's the end of the fucking world. My asshole's usually as regular as an atomic clock, but I ain't even had a pucker in the past two days. And it ain't for a lack of fucking trying. I've been packing in all the foods that usually do the trick. Burritos, taquitos, quarter pound with cheese, Doritos, Cheetos, quarter flounder with peas. <laughs> Dudes, he's just making up foods now. Nectarines, tangerines, ice cream sundae with nuts, green beans, sardines, 18 pack of cold cuts, <laughs> <laughs> creme brulee, curds and whey, boxer two of saltines, fish fillet, goose pate. Big old bowl of black beans. <laughs> Filet mignon, parmesan, oh. two hot dogs and one bun. <laughs> Candy pecan, gray poupon, coffee after a run. Oh my God. Hell, I even tried using the teacher's lounge, oh. leaving a two-tower mud castle sticking up out of the water without flushing as my go-to method for shit-blaming Principal Squeen. <laughs> Thinking about it usually gets the engine running immediately, but still nothing. Oh, fuck, dude. Did you ever have a moment like this in your life? Where I couldn't shit? For two days? No, I don't think that's ever happened. Yeah, I didn't think so either. I that's shit. how you know this is false. Well, the average human being shits what? Probably once a day. 13 or 14. What? Once a day, twice a day, maybe? Okay. Might be something wrong with you, Chad. I think it's somewhere up around a dozen. <laughs> October 17th, 1991. Dear Diary, had to put chapstick on my fucking asshole this morning. <laughs> it's, dry, it's drying out from underuse. Never knew that was possible. My guts feel fine, though. No sense of discomfort at all, despite me doubling my fucking caloric intake in an effort to shock my bowels into action. <laughs> Going into the bathroom is getting hard, though. Just standing there at the urinal, listening to those other turds hit the water, <laughs> smelling them. Never been jealous of another, another man. Never been jealous of another man shitting in my life. Guess there's a first time for everything. I like that Dudesy has assigned uh, not God. only that I can't shit and that this is all scatological. Yeah. Everything that Dudesy ever talks about with regard to me and my childhood diary is either scatological. Uh, it's about crying to you two or pining for the undertaker. Now mm -hmm. it's got me smelling poo poo saying that I want that. I even just, I'm, is it that I'm enjoying smelling the poo? You're, I think I'm jealous. You're saying you're jealous of yeah. other guys being able to shit. October 18th, <laughs> 1991. Dear diary. Mayday, mayday. I don't know this. Ha I don't know how this happened, but Jibber Prevalia's annual. F I don't know how this happened, but Jibber Prevalia's annual fall co ed camping retreat snuck right the fuck up on me. I still haven't taken a shit, and Dad's driving the bus to the campsite tonight. 
Dante Little Leg, Jennifer Neutrino, <laughs> Sonny Sutton, Donnie Dutton, <laughs> Cam Gum, <laughs> Nathaniel Latardo, Sandrine Computer. Hell, even Rachel Crustacean's going to be there. <laughs> oh, God, no. I think about skipping this year in my current condition. I think about skipping this year in my current condition, but I can't miss the opportunity to get valuable one-on-one -on -one time with Crustacean. We'll be camping right next to the first kiss forest, and everybody knows that's your best shot for a first kiss. Oh, God. This is kind of sweet. <laughs> yeah. I'll try to push one out. I'll try to... I'll try to push one out right before I get on the bus, <laughs> but, but I think I'm going to have to take my chances out there in the fucking woods. <laughs> Hopefully they got a decent fucking porta potty. Was there, was there a first kiss forest or something like that where you grew up? There was a forest that we called the fuck forest. And although, oh, Jesus. yeah, no fucking took place there. It was just right. that there was a wooden fence nearby that had the word fuck spray painted on it. October 19th, 1991. Dear Diary, I swallowed seven sleeves of bacon-flavored Ritz crackers on the bus ride out and still nothing. Except a little stomach gurgling last night. Maybe that's a sign. But I'll tell you an even bigger fucking sign. Rachel Crustacean just made a point to sit next to me at the campfire. Oh my God. While Jibber's dad was... <laughs> while Jibber's dad was playing Brian Adams songs on a banjo. <laughs> a banjo? Crustacean was asking me if I wanted to go explore a little today. She specifically said, I hear there's a nice forest close by. I think this camping trip is going to be it. My actual first kiss. And I couldn't be more excited. I can't help but wondering what Hulk Hogan's first kiss was like. And I hope I can measure up. So now it's Stone Cold reading my diary. Wondering aloud uh, what Hulk Hogan's first kiss yeah. was like. Have you ever thought about Hulk, what Hulk Hogan's first kiss was like? As much as I think about Hulk Hogan in a given day, no, Chad. I've never thought about That's what Hulk Hogan's first kiss was like. That's pretty interesting, actually. I'm now thinking about it. Mm. I do wonder what it was like. I know he was a big, beefy, weirdo teenager who played yeah. the bass. He was probably doing all right because he was in a band and stuff. Yeah. October 20th, 1991. Dear Diary, Crustacean and I left the main campground around gu Dust. Dust. Crustacean and I left the main campground around dusk to explore the surrounding area per her request. <laughs> she knew right where she was gonna, gonna, as she, she knew right where she was going as she took my hand and led us into a small clearing in the first kiss for us where we saw it, a Ladner landmark, the smooching boulder. <laughs> Not far off from the yeah, from the fuck forest. That's good. Smooching similar. boulder. It was a rock covered in graffiti from all the locals who'd had their first kiss there. Rachel said, you know, they say you can't put your name on the smooching boulder unless you kiss while you're standing near it. I've heard that too, I said, trying to play it cool and succeeding in that attempt. <laughs> so we walked over to the boulder and I looked down. She ran her hand across all the names that were there before us. Conrad Ferrari and Jennifer Samantha. <laughs> Pip Denbar and Hadrian Decade. Who the fuck is it? I don't even know. Please start. Jim Ginch Gonch and I Evil and Ornament. <laughs> All had their names circled in a heart. Then Crustacean pulled out a paint marker and said, You want to put our names on the boulder? Oh, hell fucking yes. We leaned in. I, what is, is that like a childhood version of oh, hell yeah? I oh, hell know. fucking yes. I have no idea. We leaned in. I held my breath. And just as our lips were about to touch, I felt the unbridled power of a week's worth of unspent stool racing <laughs> through my lower intestine straight for my anus. There was no way I was going to be able to hold it back. So I just ran away. No time for an explanation. No time for anything, but to hope like hell that I could get to somewhere secluded to unleash what would easily be the largest work of art I've ever, I've ever created without offending crustacean. <laughs> <laughs> what oh uh, are you okay yeah i need more water jesus christ uh, the closest i got was a few feet outside mr Prevalia's tent 
Luckily, he was out by the campfire playing his banjo, and no one else seemed to notice, which was hard to believe. The smell of it, the sight of it, hell, even the sound of it was like a triple thunderclap, but there wasn't a cloud in the sky. I felt like someone should at least turn their head, but no one did. I was left alone as my body began a series of involuntary heaves. The waves of stool demanding my spine to bend in ways I didn't think was possible. The steady stream was interrupted only twice by staccato firings of golf ball sized pellets that might have been the parties responsible for this unhealthy blockage. Once I was done, I unzipped. <laughs> Once I was done, I unzipped Mr. Prevalia's tent and used his door flap to wipe. Wasn't proud of that, but I had no choice. <laughs> then I, I went then I went back to find Crustacean, but she was gone. I went back to the camp, but she and Jennifer Neutrino were already in their tent. Zipped up, cut off. I fucking botched it. <laughs> but next morning when we all woke up and started packing to leave, Jibber's dad noticed my pile and said, Whoa, I didn't know there were bears in this part of the forest. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I shit blamed a bear without even trying. <laughs> you got it. You still fucking got it. Wow. I wish that was my life. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Dude. Thank you. Moving on. Oh, God. All right. Anyway, Stone Cold Diaries. <clears throat> I really do have something going on. <clears throat> ah, ah. All right. All right, here we go. November 11th, 1991. Dear Diary, big fucking news at school today. We got a new kid. And not just any kid. It's Principal Squeen's estranged son, Cornelian Squeen. <laughs> no one knew Squeen had a kid. Turns out he was living down in Tampa, Florida with his mom, but she got remarried. Some international investment banker. Oh, hell yeah. She's moving to Vienna to live in a fucking palace. <laughs> Corn didn't want to switch continents, so he got shipped to Ladner. Gotta be tough starting over in a whole new school, not knowing anybody. I feel bad for him, I truly do. But rules are rules, and it don't matter if he's got squeen blood pumping through his veins or not. He's a new kid, so I gotta shit blame him by the end of the week. <laughs> You're catching it. Uh, yeah, probably, dude. COVID. November 12th, 1991. Dear Diary, I've been thinking about something a lot, lady. Late lady? I've been thinking about something a lot lately. A few things, really. They're kind of like rules for how to shit blame. <laughs> a few standard strategies that you should always be using. I guess they're actually more like laws. These are the four laws of shit blaming. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Law one. Never take the blame. The whole point of shit blaming is to blame someone else for the shit you took. If you take the blame, then you're not shit blaming. You're just shitting. <laughs> Law number two, always have a full tank. There's no worse feeling on this dying world than seeing an opportunity for an impromptu shit blame materialize like a miracle before your eyes. But you have no turn to give. My, digest my digestive tract is now essentially a continuous turd, transitioning <laughs> through various forms of evolution, from the first bite of a bologna and cheese sandwich with a side of old Dutch lightly salted potato chips, all the way down to a deep mocha-colored moray eel with the consistency of an unripe banana perched half an inch <laughs> from my rectal sphincter. <laughs> Waiting and watching for my call to action. I can quite literally shit on demand 24 hours a day. Can you? <laughs> Law number three. Time beats location. The where is important. Don't get me wrong. But never as important as the when. If you take a shit outside the context of a publicly agreed upon lavatory, someone will find it. And they will want answers no matter where you do it. <laughs> So if, so if no one is around for a few minutes, it's not too quiet, it's not too sunny, and the, and the time is right, it might not be the exact location you'd staked out. Take the shit 
anyway and have enough confidence in your improv skills that you will find a way to make that location work into your larger narrative. <laughs> law uh, four black <laughs> law four blackout contingency protocol <laughs> although it has never happened to me i assume the day must eventually come that i will be caught in the act of shitting and this first-hand eyewitness will make it impossible for me to blame anyone else but as i stated in law number one i will never take the blame so if blame can't be given, it has to be eliminated. And the best way to do that is to pretend to pass out immediately. Force the faculty to call a doctor. Remain unconscious. Then force them to call an ambulance. Remain unconscious. Go to the hospital. Remain unconscious. Stay overnight. Remain unconscious, then wake up the next morning with no memory of what happened to you for the past 24 hours. The shitting will take back seat to concern over what mystery illness could have put you in a one-day coma and erased your memory. There will be no blame. I actually agree with blackout protocol. I uh, have come close to using it myself. Uh, when? How? I was in the back seat of a car being driven by my then girlfriend's parents. I had to take a massive shit. It was building up, building up, building up. Uh, her mom was like, kind of stopped starting the car. And I was at a certain point, 100% convinced I was going to shit my pants in the back. Did seat you tell them car. that you were going to poo? No. So, oh, okay. It was like a very early meeting type right, thing. You know right. what I mean? Would not have been appropriate. And so I was just like, how the fuck am I going to get out of this? And I actually thought about doing something similar. I was like, well, if I just shit my pants... I'm just going to pre pretend to be blacked out. Yeah, but it didn't come to that. No, I held it in. Proved to myself that I could do anything. November 3rd, 1991, dear diary. I've been tracking corn squeen for three days. <laughs> I know his entire schedule. First period. Biology with Mr. Dinner. <laughs> 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 Second period, weightlifting with Mrs. Termite. <laughs> oh my goodness. Third period, teeth and bones with <laughs> Professor Tony Boy. Four fourth period, trigonomony. <laughs> fourth period, trigonomony with Mr. King, a.k.a. the, the chit-chat king. Fifth period, Ladner Customs and Traditions, taught by the incomparable Sir Pepperstain. <laughs> Sixth period, Topiary Gardening with the school groundskeeper, Blake the Rake Baker. <clears throat> Target sits alone at lunch. Target goes to the bathroom during fourth period every day. That seems like the best time to strike. Should be a cakewalk. What? Should be a cakewalk. All right. Ooh, what's going to happen? November 14th, 1991, dear diary. My plan was airtight. Leave my fourth period class on a bathroom pass. Wait for Corn Squeen to emerge from his class. Trail him to the bathroom. Take a shit in the hallway in front of the bathroom. Inform the nearest teacher of the brown pile of feces I happened upon. And offer my speculation that it was Corn Squeen based on seeing him heading into the bathroom earlier. Wait with that teacher until Corn Squeen emerges from the bathroom and is forced to answer for his supposed crime. It was textbook. Only thing is, none of it happened. I waited and waited, but Corn Squeen never emerged from his class. I roamed the hallways looking for him at least 10 minutes, but he was nowhere to be found. I decided to head back to class to try again tomorrow, but I never made it back to class. When I turned the corner at the end of Hallway B, I ran smack fucking dab into a 7-inch triple twister, complete with peanut inlay. I knelt down, had to get a closer look. <laughs> Whoever dropped that thing was good. Real fucking good. That's all I remember thinking as I looked up and saw Corn Squeen pointing at me from the other side of the hall. And standing next to him was his fucking dad. Corn Squeen shit blamed me. Tried to anyway. Once I got into Squeen's office, I talked my way out of it as usual. I've never, I've never had a... <laughs> 
I've never had a rival in anything. Not football, not comedy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And certainly not shit blaming. I have a certain respect for corn squeen, but that won't stop me from doing what I have to do. Corn squeen must be destroyed. Please tell a friend and rate it review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend and rate it review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend and.